Hi everyone, here's the video for 7-3, um, operations with radical expressions. Um, so for the warm-up, you could factor out, or you could simplify root 12 first, but you might notice that 3 times 12 is just 36, and the square root of 36 is just 6. So that might be a little bit easier, but if you would rather factor it out first, you get... 3 times 3 times 2 times 2, here's a group of 2, here's a group of 2, and you still get 6. So either way you do it, you should get the same answer. Um, for number 2, we factor it out. So we have 3 times 3 times 3 times A times A times A group of 2, group of 2, radicand, and you need your absolute value sign around your A because your index is even. And for number 3, uh, you can factor this using magic X. So we get square root of X plus 7 times X plus 7. Your index is 2, so here's my group of 2. So I have x plus 7, but since my index is even, I need absolute value sign around it. <coughs> um, so when you're dividing, it's the same rule as when you're multiplying. Your index needs to be the same. So I want to point out that sometimes you can take the roots of the numerator and denominator separately. Sometimes that's the easiest way to do it. Um, for example, in number 1, well, I think it's a lot easier to take the square root of 25 which is 5, and the square root of 36, which is 6, separately. And your answer is just 5 over 6. Um, but you can also divide the radicands first and then find the roots. So, um, meaning you can divide the numbers on the inside first. So if you look at number 2, square root of 75, that's not something that gives you a whole number. Square root of 3, that's not something that gives you a whole number. Let's try dividing first. 75 divided by 3 is 25. Now we have something that we know the answer to already. Square root of 25 is just 5. If you would rather factor it out separately, you would still get the same answer. So 75 is 5 times 5 times 3. And then you still have a square root of 3 on the bottom. Here's your group of 2. So you have 5 root 3 over root 3. These cancel out and you have 5. So you would end up with the same answer, but I think that this first way is just quicker and easier. If you don't catch that, it's okay. Factoring will always work. For number 3, we'd want to do them separately. Square root of x squared is absolute value of x because it's an even index, and the square root of 100 is just 10. And then for number 4, there's one thing I don't like about number 4, and it's that I have a negative exponent. But luckily, it's easy to take care of it. The way you get rid of a negative is by flipping it. So we're going to move that b squared from the bottom to the top. So we really have cube root of 8a cubed b cubed, because I already had 1b, and then I'm adding b squared. And on the bottom, I have cube root of 27. So we know that the cube root of 8 is 2, cube root of a cubed is a and b, and the cube root of 27 is just 3. I do not need absolute value signs because my index is odd. Um, when you're adding or subtracting radicals, this is where it gets a little bit different. So just like, multi just like multiplying and dividing, you need to have the same index but this time you also need to have the same radicand, which remember is the inside. So I can add square root of 2 and square root of 2, that's okay, but I cannot add square root of 2 plus square root of 3 because they have different radicands. So your index and the radicand needs to be the same. So you can see for number 1, we have square root of 2 and square root of 2, so I can add them. All you need to do is add up your coefficients. 5 plus 8 is 13, so I have 13 root 2. Notice that my radical does not change. All that changes is my coefficient. Sometimes 
um, you'll have something where you can't initially add or subtract it, but you always need to simplify your radicals first. So you might notice that square root of 45 needs to be simplified. So let's factor it out. So I'm looking for a group of two. So remember, when I move my three to the outside, I get 21. And now I am ready to subtract because my index and my radical are the same. So all I need to do is 21 minus 2, which is 19. So my answer is 19 root 5. Um, for number 3, Sometimes you're going to have a radical that you can't combine with the rest, and that's okay. But I see that I can combine these two radicals. So I'm going to do 7 plus 3, and that's 10. So I have 10 fourth root 5x. And then that root 7 just stays the same. I can't combine them. Just leave them separate. As long as they're simplified, that's okay. Um, for number 4, we do need to try to simplify both of those radicals. So you might notice that first radical has a GCF of 25. When you rewrite your radical, make sure you include your GCF in your radicand. And that second radical has a GCF of 9. Okay, and I see that the square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of 9 is 3. So now I have the same index and the same radicand, so all I need to do is 5 minus 3. So it's 2 root x minus 1. Um, number 5 is a little bit tricky. I'm going to start by simplifying them completely. So that first one... I'm looking for a group of 3. So I have a 3y cube root y squared. My second radical can't be simplified because I will not have any groups of 3. And my last radical we have a group of 3, a group of 3, and a group of 3 so it becomes 2y squared. So now you can see that I can combine these two radicals. The question is, how do I combine it if I have 3y and 4? You're still going to add them together, but since you can't combine terms that are different, you just put them in parentheses next to each other. 3y plus 4. So I have 3y plus 4 cube root y squared plus 2y squared. That cannot be combined so I just stay separate. And for number six, you might notice that these two cannot be subtracted because they have different, um, they have a different index. But just because they can't be subtracted doesn't mean you don't need to simplify them. So you still need to simplify them completely to get the correct answer. So. So they factor out in the same way. But just remember, for one, I'm looking for groups of three, and for the other, I'm looking for groups of two. And then, so for my first one, here's my group of three, so it becomes three cube root of two. And for my second one, here's my group of two. So it becomes 3 square root of 6. And you might notice that they both have a 3 in front. So we can actually factor that 3 out. 3 times cube root of 2 minus square root of 6. And there you have it.